Oh, well, you can't save them all. Still, the game makes up for its shortcomings with a sharp sense of humor. And excellent voice acting. Oh, sh it's dim sometimes. You think you're this good, huh? <laughs> Let's see about that. It has the guy who played Lo Pan in Big Trouble in Little China. Damn, why do I always have this effect on women? Ultimately, despite its flaws, you give True Crime Streets of L.A. a pistol-packing four out of five. Here comes the lead enema. And so I leave you with more of the wit and wisdom of Snoop D.O. Double G. Get the f*** out of here. You'll bring it back. What kind of dumbass just let man? someone take their Kids love him. <laughs> okay, as you can see, this game is really funny. And that almost makes up for all the bugs in the game. Almost. Now, if the developers had just waited a little bit longer, this would have been a surefire five out of five. Yes, now developers, we understand about the fourth quarter, but for the love of all that is holy, just take the time to fix the bugs. Game testers, do your jobs. Thank you. And if you'd like to read full reviews of any of the games you saw today, visit our website. TechTV.com slash Xplay. Very good. Go there now. Good all these nice. games were good. They were. <laughs> Play. Yes, it's Return of the King. Plus, the today on X Play, magic skull loving nerds rejoice. It's Dungeons and Dragons, the Temple of Elemental Evil. Another World War II game. And uncomfortable moments in gaming. Brace yourself, it's game time. Please welcome your host, wait for it, wait for it, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. It was worth the wait. Yes, yes it was. Hello and welcome to X-Play, the show where we lavish praise on good games. And mercilessly savage the bad one. Yes, that's the best part. On today's show we have Dungeons and Dragons for the nerds. Pokemon for the young. Or the stone. Yes, and a game in, in which tough inner city gangs resolve violent turf wars by playing soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, one of the most horrifying moments of nudity in gaming ever. Yes, however, we kick things off with yet another World War II shooter. It's also squad based. Here's our review of Hidden and Dangerous. March 4th, 1941. The whole world is caught up in the frenzy of war. The world's powers are amassing their armies and they're expecting our team to inflict damage to the German operations behind enemy lines. Yes, it's time to return once again to the war-torn fields of Europe in Hidden and Dangerous 2. This squad-based tactical shooter brings new... Um... Well, okay, the varied and detailed missions let you... Okay, folks, mark this day on your calendars. This is a day that will live in infamy. The day X-Play finally ran out of ways to describe World War II games. That's it. We're spent. He's dead. Just look at the pretty pictures of your grandfathers shooting at each other and hear me out. Now, I know that World War II was terribly, terribly important. Tom Brokaw keeps telling us that it was the greatest generation, and I just can't say no to his puppy dog eyes. But it seems like there have been enough games to feature every single member of that generation. Enemy sighted! And there are other wars. Good wars. Wars that would make great games. How about the Spanish-American War? Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Rider charge up San Juan Hill would make for a fabulous squad-based tactical shooter. Or the invasion of Grenada. You want real-time strategy? You can fight the whole war in a couple of days. Stop chatting! We need this frequency clear! Yeah, I know. This is supposed to be a review of the game not a rant about the genre. But this game is the perfect example of a blindingly average World War II shooter. Stop me if you've heard this before. Hidden and Dangerous 2 focuses on the daring exploits of a small band of elite British soldiers. Okay, stop stopping me. Your plucky squad must face the challenging tasks that so many plucky squads have faced before.
The facility above ground could be just a decoy. It may be that it's a top-secret research facility whose main part is built underground. No, really? You think so? Those Nazis, they're so sneaky. But, all my ranting aside, Hidden and Dangerous is a pretty good game. You run around, you shoot Nazis, you hide in the sewer, your buddies do a pretty good job of watching your back. They don't have the best AI we've ever seen, but they're far from the worst. Squad combat fans will find a lot to like in Hidden and Dangerous. People who don't like complicated team management won't. We give Hidden and Dangerous 2 a 3 out of 5. We give the insane overpopulation of the World War II genre. Yeah, we're not even gonna rate that. Get me out of here. Oh, World War II games, you breed like rabbits on Viagra. Oh yeah, there's Call of Duty. World War II Desert Rats. Battlefield 1942. Return to Castle Wolfenstein. With secret weapons over Normandy. Commandos. Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Medal of Honor Front Line. Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Medal of, Medal of Honor Pacific Assault. Enough yeah. is enough. Yes, yes, that's it. That's it. Okay, well, let's no. talk about nudity. Ooh, I don't want to talk about it. I want to see it. <laughs> I played a lot of video games, and no one does games like Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima. He loves to throw those wacky curveballs, those in-jokes, those extras at his audience, but a few years ago, he gave Metal Gear fans a moment they'll never forget, and today, we bring that moment to you. And now, X-Play presents Uncomfortable Moments in Gaming. Today's story, Naked Raiden. The year, 2001. The game, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Fanboys across the globe jumped at the chance to once again play manly Metal Gear badass, Solid Snake. This is Snake. Do you read me, Otacon? While he manages to pack a little something for the ladies, Snake virtually bleeds testosterone. So imagine the fanboy's surprise when less than halfway through the game, Snake disappears, and players found themselves controlling effeminate girly ninja Raiden. Damn it. Ooh, look at his flowing hair, and he can do cartwheels. Yippees! Raiden, get out of here. My thoughts exactly. Then, near the end of Sons of Liberty, Raiden is captured and wakes up naked in the hands of the enemy. Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop the camera! What should we do with him? We'll use him like you suggested. While the development team does an admirable job of hiding his unmentionables, eventually Raiden frees himself, leading to one of the most disturbing gameplay segments in PlayStation history. We present it to you here in all its horror. Oh, Lord. I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with this. Oh man, this is one of the least dignified things I've ever seen. No, don't go in there! Oh god, don't slow it down! Well, you get the point. Eventually, Snake finds Raiden some clothes. Snake! They both go on to win the game, but by then, the damage is done. <laughs> Millions of male Metal Gear fans will forever have the image of naked Raiden doing cartwheels seared into their memories. Female fans have had the revenge for DOA Beach Volleyball, Final Fantasy X2, Psy Girls, and pretty much every other game ever made. Okay, sure, in this day and age, the sight of a naked man doing gymnastics should fail to shock and titillate. But somehow, back in 2001, it seemed kind of freaky. You know, it doesn't really bother me. You know, most of the games I've played have women with enormous chests and skimpy armor and breast physics. And, you know, my guy friends talk endlessly about the breast physics. Ooh, so welcome to my world, Sessler. Welcome to my naked, cartwheeling world. Thanks for having me. Up next, hitting ye old bottle in Dungeons and Dragons, the Temple of Elemental Evil. If you're a business migrating to IP telephony, you might think you need one of these to scrap the old and schlep in the new. But not 
not in the, but not in the state of a bike. Here, your IP rollout is smooth sailing. With our technology and services, you keep what you have. The forklift stays parked. Come on, your business. Do what 90% of Fortune 500 companies do. Reach Avaya, a higher plane of communication. Introducing the all-new Mitsubishi Galant. More room, better warranty, more to feel good about. Still starting under 18 grand. Any company can promise you lots of resumes. But only Yahoo Hot Jobs uses Yahoo search technology to make it easy to find the perfect candidate for the perfect job. This is Steve. I believe he's who you were looking for. Thank you. Anytime. New Year's resolution number one, get a new job. Yahoo Hot Jobs can help you start the new year with a new job. Number two, help those who help others. We'll be helping job seekers start 2004 off right, and we'll also be helping out the Junior Achievement Organization with a donation. Number three, come into some bling bling. Sign up, post, or update your resume with Yahoo Hot Jobs for a chance to win a $20,000 signing bonus. For more information, visit hotjobs.com today. Above all, we resolve to help all Americans have a prosperous new year. Yahoo Hot Jobs, find the right one. Tuesdays on Tech TV. At 8.30, hot products and cool gadgets. Check out fresh gear. We got our hands on one, and we are giving you a sneak peek. Then at 9, ordinary people with amazing ideas. Watch Invent This. If people have to live in boxes, somebody should at least invent a better box. And at 9.30, what happens when your body is pushed to the limits? Watch Body Hits. Yeah! It all starts Tuesday night at 8.30, 7.30 Central on Tech TV. Let's try something new. Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler. Wow. Oh, I like it in that order. Welcome back to X-Play. Now, for those of you tired of rolling your 20-sided die around all by yourself, and we got a game for you. It's a highly anticipated Dungeons & Dragons title that takes things back to the days of turn-based combat. It's kind of like Baldur's Gate. And it's being hyped up by fans because it features the brand new 3.5 edition D&D rules. What? Yeah, I don't know what the hell that means either. Here's a review of Dungeons & Dragons, the Temple of Elemental Evil. Well, well, well. Could this finally be the Dungeons & Dragons game that eager nerds have long hoped for? Looks pretty good so far. Fancy introductory graphics, deep character configurations based on the D&D 3.5 rule set, and plenty of lengthy adventures to occupy those lonely Friday and Saturday nights. Making good on your promise, you travel to Hamlet. Well, I know what you're thinking. Adam, has the Lord answered our prayers? Could Temple of Elemental Evil be the D&D game to end all others? In short, my geeky brethren, the answer is nay. For the most part, the game is cack. On the one hand, Dungeons & Dragons Temple of Elemental Evil is in fact the latest incarnation of the somewhat coveted D&D license. This much is true. But on the other hand, anyone who actually sits themselves down and tries to play through this craven beast might end up with permanent brain damage. Perhaps the game was rushed to market. I don't know. But the resulting title is a disappointing and buggy experience. You arrive in Hamlet as the bearer of terrible news. To begin with, players can choose for themselves from a variety of alignments. Alignments determine what kind of characters you can have in your party. Great. You can even create your own halfling and call him Frodo if you want. Fine by me. My chosen alignment, however, should in turn reveal different adventures. Right away. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, the variety of adventures varies only superficially. You arrive in Hamlet looking for Black Jay. No matter what type of quest you try to immerse yourself in, you still end up talking to the same drunks. No, I'm not. Hello there. Sorry to have bothered you, man. This guy smells like he bathed in Jack Daniels. Additionally, you'll find yourself stumbling across items that, for no apparent reason, you're unable to use. This is further complicated by the occasional random encounter that, one, because of buggy software, makes no sense. And two, 
often keeps you from continuing with your game, which means your only recourse is to quit and start all over. Following your map, you arrive at the village of Homlet. Think I'm getting a headache. All this frustration is compounded by the fact that if you squint your eyes just right, you can see that there are hints of excellent design and truly engaging gameplay. However, digging through the garbage to find a diamond means you're still digging through garbage. Yeah, it's a shame. We're smelling a lot of if only coming off this game, and we can only afford Dungeons and Dragons Temple of Elemental Evil an underwhelming two out of five. Of course. This game is pretty buggy. I suspect this is a case of a highly anticipated title getting rushed out before the end of the fiscal quarter. For now, D&D fans, stick to the pen and the paper and the dice, the pewter figurines and stacks of rule books, the loneliness and the pseudo chamois armor you made for yourself out of old pull tabs. What? What are you looking at? What? 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 So you don't have one of those tree top apple juice? Oh, oh. In a moment, this is your brain. This is your brain on the Pokemon channel. Any questions? Every piece has its purpose. The Element, from Honda. Honey, we're pregnant. Oh, hey. let's get to work. Twins. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Morning, baby. What's so good about it? Mood swings, perfectly normal. Breast pump. Ow. There's an accident on the 20, so take the parkway. Life's better with the butterfly. Come see all the ways you can get more done at msn.com. My name is Viktor Koryabuk. I was born in the Soviet Union. My family and I, we moved to America when I was a teenager. Today I'm a striker driver in the United States Army. Growing up, I was told to be like everybody else. In America, it's different. You can express yourself. You can show people who you really are, what you can do. That's why I don't take my freedom for granted, and I'm willing to fight for it. Catch an American success story. See what's next for Victor at GoeArmy.com. I'm Stanley Johnson. I've got a great family. I've got a four-bedroom house and a great community. Like my car? It's new. I even belong to the local golf club. How do I do it? I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Need a smart way to consolidate your debt? At LendingTree.com, you can combine all your separate high-interest charges into one low monthly payment. Call 1-800-831-4971. I can barely pay my finance charges. Right now, you can take advantage of home equity rates as low as 3.75%, and your interest may be tax deductible. Somebody help me. Come to LendingTree.com, where banks compete and you choose the loan that's right for you. When banks compete, you win at LendingTree.com. Call 1-800-831-4971. I'm running out of stupid things to say, so here's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. It's, it's still stupid. Welcome back to X-Play. You know, every time I think to myself, Adam, what would you enjoy less than a knife in the kidney? And I always say, reviewing a Pokemon game. Yeah, well, Pokemon may have jumped the shark, but don't tell developers that because they just released a new Pokemon game, and it's aimed at five-year-olds. So, of course, I gave it to Adam, and he threw it back at me. So I tried to tap into my inner child to review Pokemon Channel. Now my inner child's whimpering. Mine isn't. <laughs> I'm here on the scene. Welcome to Pokemon Channel, Nintendo's newest Pokemon game. You play a crack television tester. The good folks down at the Pokemon channel sent you a TV, and your job is to watch it. Actually, your job is to watch your Pikachu watch TV. The thing is, there's not really that much on. There are episodes of an insipid cartoon called Pichu Brothers in Party Panic. I think the pink one's horny. Since Pokemon only say their names ad nauseum, 
you spend the whole time reading subtitles. Well, at least the kids are learning to read. There's the quiz channel, though I didn't seem to know any of the answers. Hmm, can I get a lifeline from the eight-year-olds in the audience? This is the egg hatching channel. You watch it for five minutes until the egg hatches. No, I'm not kidding. On this channel, you wait until the weather changes. May I point out that at no time are you required to hit any buttons? Oh, and for those of you who don't know, hitting buttons is what makes something a video game. This is the relaxation channel, because I'm not bored enough. You have to watch these boring, ridiculous shows all the way through. Then you have to wait until the next day to get new shows, which is also known as resetting your system clock. In case you're wondering where the game part comes in, it doesn't. You literally watch your Pikachu watch TV. The shopping channel could count as slightly interactive. Ooh, a turd doll. God, Pikachu's gonna want it. Pikachu wants you to buy him everything he sees on TV. He's like having a bratty child. Squirtle sounds like he's on the losing end of a 40-year smoking habit. You can take screen captures and color them in, then sell them at auction or have them discussed on the art show. Or you could buy a coloring book and some crayons. That would be funner and cheaper. Yep, that's about as interactive as it gets. You can go outside with Pikachu and meet other Pokemon. You can make Pikachu water your garden or look at certain landscape features. But mostly, Pikachu wants to watch TV and buy things. The whole experience of watching something watch TV feels like some bizarre comment on society that needs further study. But not for 40 bucks and not by me. Pokemon Channel gets a 1 out of 5 for not actually being a video game. This feels like a weird Japanese title that should have never been imported. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's being sold as a game. At best, it's sort of a DVD with a large disc menu. I was just playing the entire game looking at the screen like this. I imagine that's how the viewers look at us. Up next, Mock Crew is gonna burn you. Top boy bands play inner city footy in freestyle street soccer. Stick it in! You can make a great salary by getting IT certified now with Smart Certified Direct's fast and easy training courses. Their self-paced MCSE, Cisco, and a certification training allows you to study whenever and wherever you want with 24-hour access to certified instructors. Take a free training course title now by visiting www.smartcertifiedirect.com or by calling 1-877-TRAINING and mentioning code TECHTV. Get your free course today. Why are Gateway's new notebooks winning awards? Maybe it's that our 200X is less than one inch thick at a flyweight 4.3 pounds. It's also got Intel Centrino mobile technology for greater wireless freedom and longer battery life. And right now it's an unbelievable value. Be sure to check out our multimedia M675 with a huge 17 inch widescreen that's also winning awards. Call 1-800-555-2086 and go mobile for less. Introducing the first SUV with a power sliding rear roof. Whoa. The revolutionary Envoy XUV found only at your GMC dealer. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. We were over our heads in credit card debt and looking for a way out. A number of companies said they would help us but they were only interested in charging huge upfront fees and putting us further into debt. Credit Guard of America was different. Credit Guard of America won't put you further into debt. As a nonprofit service, we've helped thousands of people for over 11 years. We work with you and your creditors to reduce your monthly payments so you can get on with life. Credit Guard of America cut my monthly payments in half. They cut my interest rate from an average of 23% to 8%. Some even went to zero. I'll be out of debt in four years instead of 20. Credit Guard of America saved me over $13,000 in interest fees alone. Call now to reduce your monthly payments. Cut the interest rates on your credit cards by up to half and get your unsecured debt paid off years earlier. Don't you owe it to yourself to work with a real nonprofit service? 
Call now to find out how to receive a free credit report. Certified counselors are standing by. Call 800-213-4632. The answer back. Ah! Pringle, Pringle, show us what you got. And you can bowl them right down Santa Claus Lane. Tech TV presents Super Elf Bowling. Download the game now and go for the perfect score. Super Elf Bowling. It's all new and available only at techtv.com and instorm.com. Striking fear into the hearts of interns everywhere. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X Play. Today's game developers often tackle timely social issues. Oh, yes, for example, angry and disaffected inner city gangs. Now, the people at Acclaim thought they had a, came up with a way to deal with this important social economic oh, yes. problem in an insightful and unflinching manner. Mm -hmm. They made these street gangs play soccer. Yeah. Here's a review of freestyle street soccer. Knobs, jobs, funks, thugs, gangsters, and pranksters. This is not your sweet little limey brat's attempt to alter the trajectory of a soccer ball, a la David Beckham. No, my pretties, this is street soccer. Taste the blacktop. Don't be fooled by our pretty faces. We kick ass. Do geared up energy drink guzzling graffiti artists really partake in urban soccer combat? Maybe it's just that nobody's hip enough to find it yet. Freestyle street soccer elbows you from the onset with an array of tough guy typecasts shoved down our throats courtesy of film, music, and sports advertising. It's a tough, brawling world of hurt or be hurt as a way of garnering that more precious than gold quality known as respect. Arenas are a series of fantastic temples of ghetto fabulous. Each reflect the bravado of the individual turf keepers who seek to hold on against all comers. Because cred is the ultimate reward, you'll enter into turf wars to beat opponents off of their spray-painted perches. It seems globally that street life plays in similar dumps. Except for Asia, they have fog for some reason. Watching play can initially be intimidating as your opponent will throw some incredibly dexterous moves at you. This will cause your own thumbs to revolt, imagining how to pull off the button combos necessary to match them. Don't worry. The game simply takes over for you, as pulling your own funky freaky deaky simply requires you to hold the shoulder button down and then hit one button Easy. combos. Easy, right? Wait till someone throws a plastic picnic table at you. Pulling off crazy moves really figures into passing and team play, as you can use the environments for flips, chips, and passes. It seems the game chooses the style of your shot on goal, especially in the ultimate form of in-game street bravado known as the Net Buster. The light emanating from these nuclear shots must intrigue both the suburbanites and homeland security agents alike. Gameplay can be difficult and frustrating to control with a decided lack of refinement for intricate play. Couple this with some rough rendering during action-packed moments and the quality of the game drops to the chest-poking bravado of a gangsta eight-year-old. Whoa, it suddenly got dumber in here. Your goalie is pretty much beyond your control and a fairly porous target at that. Conversely, your opponent's goalie is like the Berlin Wall, able to stop pretty much anything you throw his way. There's also elements that lead us to believe that the old nemesis, the rubber band AI, may be in play here. You start winning, the game redoubles its efforts, and beats your binky right off of your body. Challenge my posse, you get this. Dudes, Vatos, Rosses, and Blokes, a world just wide of the net. We give it a two. Out of five. I'm looking forward to freshening you up. The premise of freestyle street soccer sounds like, you know, it's the plot of one of those bad 80s <laughs> movies where the gangs do something utterly ridiculous, like break dancing for turf. You know, it's like, please stop doing the moonwalk. Let's just use knives to settle this. Well, the developers of this are British, but that's really no excuse, I guess. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> Accents do not be get bad. No, think. no. All right, now instead of viewer mail today, we have Yoshi's Yay! Screensavers. Yay! 
Hi, so, Yoshi. Welcome. Hey. So, Yoshi, thanks for bringing um, a video game system by. We're not really aware of this. <laughs> well, th this is the spark. See, my roommate's the laziest man on the earth. And, um, you're not talking about yourself, though, now. You're talking about your, no, room, no, your well, roommate. No, no, no. He claims this was his idea, so okay. i got to give him full credit for this. Okay. Um, he didn't want to get up to turn his Xbox on and off. Neither did I. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he just took a little experimenter's, you know, kit like you do with your garage door opener, you know, real simple, and put that in there. So we don't have to get up now. If we look inside here, we just pop that bad boy right here at the end, and it's real simple. It took me about, you know, half okay, now, so, 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 so what happens now? So right here on the controller, and right in the middle of the logo there, that is actually the button. It's kind of hard to tell. Wow. If you the angle there, you can see an angle on it. And, and, and so you can actually turn your Xbox on and off remotely with... Yeah, and you know the really fun part? If someone doesn't know you have the Switch and you're playing with them and you're losing the game, you just... Uh, lost power. I don't right. know what happened. No, no. Now, we would do this ourselves. <laughs> what What is this that you put in there? Um, that's a, a little velum. You can go, go to, like, electronics supply store and get, like, an experimenter's kit to give yourself a remote control garage door okay. or anything, really. So sort of and like that's the receiver part kit. of that. Yeah, and then inside the controller here, after I drop oh, everything pieces apart. pieces are falling everywhere. Um, that right there is just the transmitter that would be normally on your keychain. Now, you're using the Logitech, and this is the wireless controller. Now, do you have to use this? Um, make it work? Well, I wireless, wireless. I just didn't want wires. Right. Oh, well, <laughs> wow. Yeah. You don't want that to get There's away. actually a mod you can do with the wired controller. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so, so it's available. And obviously, you know, there's. Some and you actually don't even this. need this kit for that one. Great. Right. So we can find out about this at the website. Yeah. Yep. There's more information there. I'm guessing you write up little articles. I about wrote everything. a good little detailed article, pictures, well, all this bullshit. Nice. Thing. And you can find out that at techtv.com/slash. Watch this. This yeah, is why it's, it's bad. Oh, my sciatica! <laughs> ah! Ah! Thank you, Yoshi. You'll prevent that from happening. Yeah. On this show, That's important. Least, yes. In society. Encouraging sedentary behavior. Looking out behavior. for the old man out there. Hey, you know, laziness is the necessity of all time.